Great. Welcome everyone to the Camino Cafe for our Spanish lesson on health related items. So we have Maria Seiko from Spanish for the Camino with us. So she's all ready to go. Yeah, well, th this is a topic I, I always say this, but this is the kind of stuff that you you wish you won't need. Uh, because you know you don't you don't want to get sick, you don't want to have an accident, you don't want to, you know have any medical or health related issues but you never know and things don't always go according to plan so it's handy to know at least a few things so salud to salud salud is the is the word for health um, and that's what we are going to talk about today to salud en el camino so let's start with just a few basic uh, parts of the body. Okay, of course, these are just, let's say, the, the most basic, the most common. Um, I will always recommend that if you have, you already know that you have like some medical issue, you know, find out before you go, okay, how to say whatever it is that you're going to need or you, that you know you are likely to need just to, you know, be, be prepared and avoid maybe a situation where you, you get to Spain and then you, you need something in relation to your health issue and you're stuck, you can find someone who can understand you and, you know, so... Maybe if, if you already know that you have some issue, do some research beforehand and write down a few key words or, or phrases that you think you might need. But anyway, we have a basic um, vocabulary here about the body. So if we're starting on the, the picture, like with the full body on the, on the left, so we have cabeza. So that's the head, cabeza. Hombro, those, uh, hombro is your shoulder. So hombros, your, your shoulders. Brazo is your arm, el brazo. Mano is the hand. Dedos are your fingers. And now, uh, one thing about Spanish, your we don't have a separate word for fingers and toes. So if you're talking about your toes in Spanish, what you're talking is about the fingers of your feet. So it's still dedo, okay? But dedo del pie, because pie, that's how you say foot. Uh, and pierna is leg so pierna is your leg then you have pie foot and in the middle of your pierna you have rodilla that's your knee rodilla and further down your tobillo that's your ankle okay so cabeza Hombro, brazo, mano, dedo, uh, pierna, leg, pie, foot, rodilla, your knee, and tobillo, your ankle. And then if we move to the other picture, uh, we have cara which is the face okay cabeza is the head so it's just the whole thing and cara is the face ojo is your an eye your ojos eyes nariz is the nose boca is the mouth and then in the other picture we have cuello so that's your neck and uh, espalda, espalda is your back. And uh, codo is your elbow. So, 
so um so far so good um, any question any other part of the body that you would like to add here that you think you might need um i i just always find it a bit okay yeah i think i can maybe stomach okay yeah estomago i will write it down in the chat also thinking maria uh the knee that's a uh, rodilla okay that's we we have it here on the on the yeah. left yeah now yeah yeah on the oh, yeah we have hombro dedo rodilla that's the knee thank you how about how about buttocks sorry your buttocks your butt uh, well we, we have several words depending on how oh. <laughs> <you know. laughs> uh, never mind <laughs> You can say, um, let's say, a, a word that it's fine in any kind of context. You could say trasero, okay? Trasero is like, tras, atrás is behind. So anything that is atrás is behind. So trasero is like, yeah, your backside, basically. Uh, yeah, so that, that one is safe to use everywhere. Then, you know, there are others that maybe they're not so appropriate depending on the on the context. Uh, but yeah, th this one is safe enough. Um, okay, so we have uh, some parts of the body. Uh, um, Mark, yeah. Is, Jim, how would you say upper and lower torso? Well, torso is just the same word, torso. <laughs> so that, that one is handy. It's ah, just, um, it's the same. Um, upper and lower, you could say um, superior for upper. Superior. And inferior for lower. Inferior. So like superior and inferior? So yes, that, that's it. Okay. Yeah, I twisted my upper and lower on the La Plata. Okay. Real bit. One went one way, the other went the other way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, but the torso is the same, you know, it's, it's the same word. Gracias. Uh, that's a handy one. Um, so we have the, the parts of the body, but then of course, you know, you, you, well, you might have uh, paying somewhere in one of these parts or, or, or another one, or you might have other problems, other symptoms, other issues. So we have a few things here. Uh, first, if you see there, like the, you know, kind of the heading, no me encuentro bien. So that's just generally, I'm not feeling well. Okay, no me encuentro bien. You could also say, no me siento bien. Okay, I'll, I'll write this in the chat. They both mean the same. No me encuentro bien or no me siento bien. Basically, I am not feeling well. And uh, now, if you want to be more specific and explain what is it that is it's wrong with you, uh, you could say me duele. Basically, me duele is like I have a pain or some part of my body hurts. So you have a headache. Remember how to say head, cabeza. So you say me duele la cabeza. It's like my head hurts. I have a pain on my legs, hurt. Me duelen las piernas. Now you see, I you have me duele and then an N in brackets. The 
without the N, duele, is if you're talking about one part of the body. It's singular, like your head. I have a headache. My head hurts. It's just one head. So me duele, la cabeza. If you're talking about something plural, let's say both your feet hurt or both of your legs hurt or your fingers, all of them or some of them, but more than one hurt, then you say me duelen, ending in N. So me duelen los pies, my feet hurt. Me duelen las piernas, my legs hurt. Me duelen los brazos, los hombros, my shoulders hurt. Me duelen los hombros. Okay, so one part of the body duele. Two or, yeah, I mean, most of them, you know, it's like two arms, two hands, two legs. Or it could be something like fingers where you have more than two. Anyway, plural, two or more dwelling and then uh, symptoms or problems that you could have you could have tos that's a cough you could have fiebre no, fever or temperature fiebre you could have diarrhea okay diarrhea or un sarpullido, that's a rash. Sa that's a, you know, bit of a kind of long, complicated, sarpullido. Um, resfriado, that's just a common cold. It's not cold as in I'm feeling cold. The weather is, you know, it's cold outside and I'm feeling cold. It's a cold, I think, I have a cold, I'm sneezing, whatever, runny nose, I have a cold. Constipado, this is a false friend, constipado is also a cold in Spanish. It's not like the English constipated, okay? So be careful with this one, you wouldn't be the first one uh, going to the pharmacy to get something and coming back with the totally wrong thing, okay? Uh, so resfriado and constipado in Spanish, they both mean cold, a cold. So uh, you have a cold. Um, gripe, the flu, nausea, I mean, just slightly different, um, pronunciation of the same word as in English and vomito quite close to um, vomit. So how do you say that you have some of these problems? So basically that you have, I have a cough, I have a fever, I have whatever, diarrhea, a rash, a cold, the flu, and how do you say I have? Now, if you've um, attended previous sessions, you, I'm, we've seen this before. So anyone can remember how to say I have? I say? I say? You can use safe oh. for, the, for the weather ¿Tiene? a lot, but... ¿Tengo? Tengo, that's right, yes. Tengo, I have. So I have a cough, tengo tos. I have a fever, a temperature, tengo fiebre. Uh, same with all of them. I have a cold, tengo un resfriado, constipado. Um, so tengo, I have. And how about... If, um, you, let's say, you're not feeling well, you go into a pharmacy, 
and you're trying to explain, okay, yeah, I'm not well, um, this is my problem. But before they give you something, they, you know, they ask you a few questions. So they might ask you, okay, do you have a cough or do you have a temperature? So what's the word for you have? We have, I have, is tengo. What about Tiene. you have? Tiene. Tiene, yeah. Yeah, here it could be tienes with an S. That would be the like informal you, if you like. Or they could use tiene without the S, which would be more formal. But anyway, both of them are okay. Um, we're not particularly, you know, um, formal in Spain. Like, I mean, in, in other countries in other languages like you know like I don't know, France Germany un unless you know someone quite well you just kind of address everyone by the the formal you in Spain it's okay I mean in some cases it, it's better to, to be more formal but it, you know it's not a big deal things have are getting quite relaxed uh, over the years uh, so either tienes or tienes so they might ask you maria i think steven oh. has a question yeah maria uh, repeat yeah? on repeat on diarrhea 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 okay. yeah Okay. Yeah, Th this is something, you know, the, the Spanish uh, pronunciation is quite um, uh, very regular. Okay, the, there are no surprises there. So, for instance, a, a word like um, diarrhea, see a lot of vowels there. You have an A, an, uh, sorry, I, A, and then an E, and another A. You have to pronounce all of them. So the I is E and the A is A. So that's dia and then the E is in Spanish is E and the A is A again because it's always pronounced in the same way. So diarrea, diarrea. Uh, same way like nausea, you also have four vowels there, nausea. So you pronounce all of them. Um, so yeah, you might go somewhere and they might ask you, okay, do you have fever? Do you have diarrhea? Do you have this or that? So tienes or tiene, either one would be okay. Well, I, I didn't include here ampolla because I'm Probably everybody already, you know, knows. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in the chat anyway. Ampolla, um, which is a blister. But that, that's something that most people already <laughs> might be familiar with. So I, yeah, totally forgot to put it there. But just in case, um, ampolla, um, a blister. And um, yeah, uh, one thing um, about this, uh, this whole health thing, um, like if you're not feeling well, okay, probably, you know, first thing you could do, um, if you need, you, you need help, go to a pharmacy. Like um, pharmacies, they're quite knowledgeable and they can, you know, most of the time they might be able to help you. And if they feel, you know, you need a doctor, you need something else that they cannot do for you, then they will help you and they will direct you and they tell you, okay, well, yeah, I think this is the problem or, or whatever. I don't know what the problem is, but I think you should be seen by a doctor or whatever. And they will, you know, uh, they will help you and they will tell you where to go or, you know, what to do, or they will, you know, call someone to, you know, come and pick you up, even if, if you can't, you know, or 
to farm, they will help. So I'd say, you know, pharmacies are, are probably your first, you know, first place to, to go if you have an issue. There is uh, something else uh, that we have, well, of course, a pharmacy is from pharmacia, very, very similar word, which they always have a big green cross so you can easily identify them. Um, there are uh, other places, they're called parapharmacia, all one word, like pharmacia, but para, para pharmacia. Uh, these are similar to pharmacies. Um, the only difference is they cannot sell prescription drugs. Mm -hmm. So they would have the other stuff that you can find in a pharmacy. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, they, they kind of were created, they became popular a few years ago because um, pharmacies are very regulated in Spain. You cannot just go and open a pharmacy anywhere you like. Okay, so it was difficult for people who, you know, um, went to college, studied pharmacy, became pharmacists. It was difficult for many of them to get a job or never mind have you know get their own pharmacy uh, so a solution they found was they, they created this they call it parapharmacia so they would have all the other things that you could find in a pharmacy except for prescription drugs okay and uh, there's probably one word that might be a bit, a bit of, a, of a false friend. You might come across shops um, that have a sign there uh, that says drogeria, okay? Uh, this has nothing to do with a uh, drugstore, okay? Drogeria is basically they sell cleaning products. Okay, like to clean the house. They usually drogeria, perfumeria, they're all in the same. So you might get like toiletries, you know, like personal hygiene um, items. But drogeria, basically, if it's only drogeria, it's just cleaning stuff. Uh, so nothing to do with, with drugs. Okay. Um, then pharmacias, um, there is always a pharmacy on call, okay? Every, every day of the week, every hour of the day, there's somewhere nearby, there's a, a pharmacy on call. So if you need a pharmacy and it's after, you know, shops have closed, uh, the easiest thing, if you go to the, the nearest pharmacy, they will have somewhere at the door or window displayed somewhere where you can see it, a little piece of paper there with the Farmacia de Guardia. Okay, so that's the, the pharmacy on call. So they will have the name of the pharmacy, the address, so that you know um, where, you know, you can find a, an open pharmacy. Uh, so that's the Farmacia de Guardia. Um, yeah, so that's about pharmacies. And of course, in Farmacia, the person working there is un farmacéutico or farmacéutica, that's the pharmacist. And if they can't help you and they think you need a, a doctor, a doctor is un, un médico or médica. Now, all these words like jobs or other words that refer to people, generally, if they end in O, the O refers to the masculine, the male. And then if you're talking about a female, 
you change the O and put an A instead. So pharmaceutico ending in O is a male pharmacist. Pharmaceutica is a female pharmacist. Medico is a male doctor and medica is a female doctor. And we also have enfermero, a male nurse, or enfermera, a female nurse. So, of course, we, we mentioned la farmacia already, pharmacy, farmacia, and parafarmacia. Um, and then if they can't help you, they might send you to the nearest centro de salud, to like a, a clinic, you know, and literally a health center. Remember that salud means health. Or to the nearest hospital. Uh, so hospital, spelling is the same, just slightly different um, pronunciation, hospital. The H in Spanish is silent, so let's pretend it's not there. Hospital. Um, there's something else I wanted to mention here about this. Mm, well, it will come back to me. Um, okay, so, so far, so good. Yeah. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I have added here a few <laughs> words that um, that you might need these days, you know, if you're doing the Camino now in these uh, pandemic times, uh, these were things that we didn't need to consider before. Uh, but the, these, these words have become everyday words, you know, the, the, always uh, mentioning these things. So, yeah. Uh, so we have mascarilla. Una mascarilla is a face mask. Okay, mascarilla which um, yeah, at the moment you're supposed to wear in Spain pretty much all the time. I mean, unless you're on your own there in the middle of nowhere, um, your mascarilla uh, must be on. Um, cuarentena, um, you can guess that one, yeah. Sounds pretty much like the English one. Uh, you don't have to do quarantena on arrival, but imagine you had symptoms that could, you know, um, uh, could be uh, COVID, and then you might be put into quarantena. Or confinamiento, there has been, and well, there still are a lot of maybe local, you know, confinamientos, if the situation, the numbers in a particular place go up very much, they might go back to confinamiento, like lockdown. Um, I mean, it's not exactly like health related, but like pandemic related. Another one that you would um, uh, that you will hear a lot is um, oh, let me, I, I'll type it here: cierre perimetral. So it's like perimeter lockdown. So, for instance, uh, right now. I'm not sure if the situation has changed in the last couple of days, but uh, at least until a couple of days ago, like, you know, I'm, I'm here on the Camino um, Portugues. So the last town before Santiago, Padrón, uh, had many cases. So they had a cierre perimetral. So you could walk through Padrón but you were not allowed to stay there. 
So you, you couldn't uh, spend the night there. So, you know, Sierra Perimetral would be something to be looking out for because they keep changing now depending on, on the situation. Um, things that you will, for instance, uh, find now in, if you go to any shop or even cafes, anywhere that you enter at uh, the entrance, gel disinfectante. So um, gel for your hands. Um, other things that you will see, signs everywhere also about keeping your distancia, your distance. And especially in places yeah, like bars, cafes, restaurants, they have to post somewhere visible outside their aforo, which is their maximum capacity. This also applies for accommodations. They have limited capacity. So you will see, you know, as I said, anywhere you go, but places like bars, cafes, restaurants, accommodations, they need to have, at, at least here in Galicia, you see all of them have outside, uh, you know, like a poster, piece of paper thing with their um, um, with, with their the maximum, you know, number of people that, that can be there um, at the same time. Um, block you. Mm, lockdown? No, I mean, you have confinamiento. Uh, the confinamiento, the cierre perimetral. Those, those are the words that are used um, regularly for, for these things. Cuarentena, confinamiento, cierre perimetral. Um, uh, I, I can't think of um, of another word. Mm. I don't know. Um, no, I, I don't think so. Then, um, be before I, I, I give you some um, phrases there for you to try and get a bit of practice. Yeah, I know what I, I want to say about the, the pharmacies. Um, I, I see a lot of, you know, in, in Facebook groups and, and all of that, um, people saying, oh, yeah, I went to the pharmacy to buy this and that, like things like maybe soap or toothpaste or, you know, things like that. Uh, I would say, I mean, for those things, you're probably better off just going to any supermarket. Okay, it tends to be cheaper than the than the pharmacies, uh, unless you need something specific. Because you know, I have some skin problem or something, so I cannot use just any soap or any cream. I need something specific. Otherwise, I would say just just go. You know, go to um, just a supermarket or or the, the ones I mentioned before the drogeria perfumeria uh, something like drogeria or perfumeria they have all sorts of um, toiletries and all of these kind of things also yeah um, Maria Natalie has her hand up yes Natalie hi Maria um, I wanted to say on the Camino Francais um, there was a lot of vending machines that had things like toothpaste and toothbrushes and blister covers and stuff like that. So if, if I couldn't get to a farmacia or somewhere, I could always buy it out of a vending machine. Yeah, I mean, that's it, because they know, you know, you wouldn't find those anywhere else, you know, outside of the Camino, because it's not your regular thing that you will need. Yeah. But, but yeah, I suppose, you know, it goes, the Camino goes through a lot of small places where there are not so many 
shops there are not so many you know it's not like in a bigger city where you know there's a few pharmacies and many yeah. supermarkets and all sorts of shops uh, so yeah obviously but I mean it's okay if you know what you need and you know mm -hmm. it's in the machine but if you need advice if you need no, no. <laughs> help uh, then just going to the just going to the pharmacy and yes. the, they usually yeah can help yeah things that i for instance you mentioned the, the blisters before and you know things like uh, tiritas okay so those are the plasters band-aids whatever you call them um those are called tiritas again i mean for those again you don't even need to go to a to a pharmacy for that you can find them in any supermarket you go to their kind of toiletry healthcare section. Curita, not in Spain. I know Curita is used, I don't know if in, in all Latin American countries, in some of them. Um, in Spain, we call them tiritas. I've heard Curita, yeah. I'm not sure how widespread it is in, in Latin America. Uh, in Spain, that, that would be a bit weird. We would say tirita in Spain. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyone else? We, we have some other questions. Hi, what, Maria. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Helen, go ahead. You call from my first Camino when my feet were in really bad shape and I was going into every pharmacy to get stuff. Um, it seems like the pharmacies are all independently owned and mm -hmm. they all have very different products. Yes. So there's one product I use and one that I got in one place I really like. The next pharmacy will have completely different selection, right? It's, it's possible, like yes. They're all independently owned, yes. Okay. That yeah, there are best. no there are no like big pharmacy chains um, that you can find everywhere. No, they're all basically they're all family businesses, you know. So they're just this pharmacy belongs to these people and that's it you know um there's no so it could have that could happen yes that they don't stock the same stuff so yeah maybe what this one has here when you try the next pharmacy they might have it or not it's uh yeah that's yeah that that's a possibility yes maria yeah Oh, I'm sorry, Helen, did you have more to your question? No, I was just looking to find that uh, symbol to lower my hand, found it. Okay. Um, I was just wondering, you maybe are going to go on this, go over this on a future slide, but I was wondering about asking for things like ibuprofen or muscle rub. Yeah, like things like, for instance, paracetamol, ibuprofen, they're very similar, okay? The, the words uh, like, Paracetamol basically is spelled the same, okay? Uh, it's just slightly different pronunciation. We say paracetamol, but that's it. The spelling is the same. The ibuprofen is ibuprofeno. So again, almost same word. So good thing about uh, these uh, is that, you know, the, the, um, they're quite similar. Then creams uh, stuff you, you you can have crema or pomada pomada is usually like some kind of medicated cream okay um like a syrup it's um, jarabe okay and then so let's just say you need a cough syrup so um, jarabe and then remember, um, cough, Let's go back, tos, so un jarabe para la tos. Literally a syrup for the cough. Or uh, 
some cream for whatever, like muscle. You mentioned muscle, I think, Lee. Muscle is musculo. So anything muscle related is muscular. So like I have a whatever, yeah. Could be some cream or it could be like spray is spray. Um, yeah, you know, so, some of these, the, the good thing is that uh, some of these words, especially with, with medicines and things like that, it, the names are quite similar. So they're usually easier to, you know, to figure out. But yeah, let's, let's have a look at, um, at some of the some of these questions that I have here for you. See who wants to give them a try. Uh, how to say them in Spanish. Anyone? Yeah, just go ahead, Stephen. Maria, um, my right knee hurts. Um, La rodilla de, de, de derecha me, me duele, but... That's right, yeah. Yeah, okay? the, the order here, it's really not important. <clears throat> you could say, me duele la rodilla the, uh, derecha, derecha, or you can start with the knee like you did, and you can say la rodilla yeah. derecha me duele. They're both fine. Bueno. Yeah. And what if it's the left one? Do you know how to say left? So no, now right is the uh, derecho, derecha. How about the left? Izquierda. Izquierda, yeah. Or este rodilla. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can point if you're stuck. That's another, that's an alternative. You can point, okay, this rodilla <laughs> is killing me. Uh, but yeah, yeah, that's always, you know, that, that's the good thing when you're in person with someone, you can use your hands, you can use anything that you have in there to make yourself understood. But anyway, izquierda is left. I mean, this applies to your knee and this applies if you are asking for directions and someone tells you that you have to take a left. Okay, it's also izquierda. So it's just left. How about the next one? I have a rash on my arms. Can you remember how to say rash? Do you want me to go back? Uh, no, I've gone too much here. Yo tengo un sarpolguito. Sí. En mis brazos. Uh -huh. uh, I was sarpolguido. Yeah, tengo, yeah, the yo, which means I, uh, in Spanish, most of the time we skip it because, you know, with tengo, you're already giving that information that it's I have, not someone else. Uh, so you can leave it out. And then in English, you use a lot in sentences like this, you know, I have a rush on my arms. In Spanish, rather than say my arms, we say the arms because for us, for our logic, you cannot have a rash on someone else's arms. Uh, you guess what I'm saying? If I say I have a rash, it can only be on your arm. I cannot have a rash on your arm. So it's like redundant saying my arms or saying my head hurts. It's only your head that can hurt. My head can hurt me. I cannot have a pain in your head. 
<laughs> if you guess what I'm trying to say. Yes. So, uh, where in English you use a lot of these possessives, I, yeah, my, my head hurts, I have my hands in my pockets, uh, I have a rash on my arms. In Spanish, we would use just the. I have a rash on the the arms because we understand that you know it's just a logical thing you, you, you cannot have a rash on someone else's arms uh, so it's you know it's not that information is not necessary you know it's just um, that's that's how we see it so we would say tengo un salpullido en los brazos rather than mis brazos but i mean if you say mis brazos it's fine you know you're going to be understood it's just just sounds a bit weird in spanish but um the message gets across which is the main thing uh let's see do you have a fever la febre tiene un tiene un febre Tiene la febre? Just trying to type here. Yeah, in this case, in English you say a fever. In Spanish, we don't put anything in front of fever. So you could just say tienes fiebre. fiebre. Just like that. Tienes fiebre. I have flu symptoms. How do you say that? <laughs> tengo symptoms de constipado. Okay, tengo <laughs> uh, symptoms de, well, because it's flu, flu gripe. is gripe. Oh, gripe. Okay, I was getting that mixed up. But yeah, constipado is a cold. But yeah. Uh, symptoms de and whatever it is that you have symptoms the, the, the construction is still valid tengo symptoms de and then the, the disease that you you have symptoms of okay do you have a cough So the you tiene, have, tiene, we just tiene, did the you have a fever. Tiene. Cough, do you remember cough? Do you want me to go back? La tos. Tos, yeah. So it's just tienes tos. Again, like fever, you don't need to put anything in front of it. So just tienes tos. Okay, I need hand gel. Do you know how to say I need? Necesito. Mm -hmm. <laughs> necesito. Yes, necesito. And the hand gel, gel, desinfectante. Um, if it's... Um, what have I done here? I don't know what I hold on. I'm not sure what I what I did here with the with the slides. Let me. Uh, okay, they're back there. Maria, Natalie has a question. Um, when you're ready. Um, I don't know how to take is my hand down. The... <laughs> not sure. How did you get it up there? Yeah. Just... I got it for you, Natalie. Sorry? I, I didn't get the... Uh, Natalie said she didn't know how to get her hand down, so I took it down for her, but then she oh, said... Oh, okay. No, okay, 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 okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure... Uh... 
I'm not sure what is going on with it. it doesn't let me share anyway I don't I'm not sure what happened with the with the sharing thing I I was saying about the the hand gel the gel disinfectante I was talking about you know what we have today because of the pandemic and every shop every establishment when you come in they have uh, this um, gel of course the same word gel is valid for any other form of gel. So like a shower gel is still gel, but you know, shower is ducha, so gel de ducha. Um, so here, well, we assume we're talking about the disinfecting gel. So necesito gel desinfectante. Um, and the last one, which I'm not sure if you can right now see the slides or not, yeah. uh, is I don't have a face mask. No, Remember? mascara. Mascarilla. Right. Mascarilla. So I don't have, all you have to no do make it negative is okay. to put no in front of it. No tengo. It's, I don't have, so no tengo. Mascarilla. That's it. No tengo mascarilla. So, um, I don't know if you have any any other questions or anything that you, I don't know, like to add, comment, anything? Now's the time <laughs> before we finish. No? Muchas gracias. <laughs> Maria, Maria, did you type mascarilla up on the, the chat? Yeah, the last thing I typed was no tengo mascarilla. Okay. Ah. Can you see it? Yeah. Sí, sí. Okay. Yeah. What? Well, if you don't have any, was anyone going to ask something? Muchas gracias. De nada. Gracias. Es muy ayudante. Y hasta luego. Hasta luego. Hasta luego, Jim. That was super helpful. Thank you, Maria. Tengo un buen día, Maria. Gracias, igualmente. Gracias. 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 Thanks. So I put in the chat um, a couple of links for Maria's site, as well as our YouTube channel, if you want to go back and watch some previous lessons. And um, right now, Maria is offering um, some other classes. So make sure you check out her website so you can learn more about that. And of course, you can always take private lessons with her as well. So uh, thank you so much, Maria. And thank you, everyone, for being here today. And we hope to see you again at one of our other events or in a class with Maria. <laughs> Or on the Camino, that sounds even better, right, guys? Yeah, that, that sounds like a great plan, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maria. Welcome, everyone. You're welcome. Gracias. Ciao. 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 Ciao, everyone. Do you want to stop the recording? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so thank you for saying that.